access for trade, the bill. tourism and investment. Will the minister update the House on how the government's trade policies are supporting jobs of hardworking Australians, and how does this compare to other approaches? The member for Minister for Tourism. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker, and I thank the member for Parks for his question because. This side of the House has a very strong track record when it comes to delivering for hardworking Australians on trade, tourism and investment, and particularly on trade, because it was this side of the House that, of course, delivered the three North Asian powerhouse agreements, delivering free trade agreements with China, with Japan and with Korea. And it was also this government that put in place the comprehensive upgrade to the Singapore-Australia free trade agreement. So we've got a long track record now of putting in place trade agreements that are making a material difference to the exports that Australia is able to ship to the world. We are a government that is committed to making sure that we continue to open up more markets for Australian exporters. And the direct consequence of the policy settings, the market access, the world's best preferential access that we're getting into export markets has been that we've been able to grow the Australian economy more strongly and to drive Australian jobs as a direct consequence. In fact, it stands in very stark contrast with that side when they were last in government. Because when Labor was last in government, their track record on trade policy was very, very different to our track record. In fact, if you look at my main priority right now, which is to focus on putting in place a comprehensive economic partnership agreement with Indonesia, I'm having to repair the damage that was done by this mob when they were last in government, because no one over in Indonesia has forgotten the track record of the Australian Labor Party when overnight they closed the gates on Australia's live export industry. No one in, in, in Indonesia is forgetting the fact that when Labor turned their back on that protein supply for Indonesia, they not only did damage to Indonesia, but they also did incredible damage to the livelihoods of Australians back here at home. Those people who work the land, those people who rely on live exports, those peoples whose mortgage payments depend upon being able to export cattle to Indonesia. They were the people that Labor turned their back on because they were more determined to make some point on principle than they were to make a rational, mature decision about the future of Australian markets. The simple fact is this, Mr Speaker, you can't trust Labor on trade policy. You can't trust Labor on trade policy because they make knee-jerk judgments like calling a China-Australia free trade agreement arguably the best deal this country has seen for many, many years. They call it a dud deal. The simple fact is, when it comes to trade policy, Labor can't be trusted. When it comes to the budget, Labor means black holes. When it comes to energy policy, Labor means blackouts, and when it comes to trade policy, Labor means a black day for our exporters. Yeah.